Dear God, I got one question I need to know, do revolutionaries go to heaven? And if so, may their legacies last forever And they seeds grow Tell them that we love them so And never let them die slow It's like we cursed to be born black We was kings and queens, now look where we at I know it won't be long before we take it back I just hope I live long enough to see it happen And that's a fact Cause one thing when you pro-black you might love your people, but they may not love you back For more than 400 years, we've been under attack We survived slavery and then they gave us crack Do revolutionaries go to heaven? 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 I wanna know. Do revolutionaries go to heaven? I hope so. Do revolutionaries go to heaven? I wanna know. Do revolutionaries go to heaven? I hope. Do Peace and blessings, family. You tuned in to another episode of Taye Speaks. Um, today is a very special episode. I came in contact um, with two brothers who have fell victim to a set of unfortunate circumstances. So I'm hoping that the viewers can show them the support that they need. All right, we're going to get right into it. How y'all kings feeling today? Feeling good, feeling good. Thank you for having us on your show. Yeah, good morning, King. How is everything? Yeah, How is everybody doing? It's definitely an honor. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully the viewers can do what they can do, man. You know, you can let them know how they can show support. But um, let them know what y'all names are and where y'all from. Uh, my name is Ronell Stevenson. This is my brother, Roger Stevenson. And we're from the what they call the DMV area right now, but we're from D.C., Maryland area. And we are currently in Ecuador, serving a sentence of uh, 34 years, eight months for a murder that we didn't commit, uh, a murder of one of our friends and his cousin. Um, my brother, he can go more in depth on it, but uh, he moved out here in 2014 um, to, and bought a farm in, uh, in, a, in the Amazon. It's called Palora, Ecuador. It's about eight hours from the capital city of Ecuador, and the capital city is Quito. And it's it's a beautiful place. It's in the in the middle of the jungle, uh, fruits, sunshine, wild animals, birds, anything you can think of. It's a it's a beautiful situation. So my brother came down here. Um, I came down afterwards just to visit and do vacation, because I was working in the states doing uh, computer networking. I was working for a company called Federal Management Systems. So I was doing that for a while while my brother was down here living his dream. I uh, came up 2017 on another vacation when I came down here to visit him. March 11th, all, all hell broke loose. All kind of drama and chaos came into our life, a complete nightmare. We, we were end up being arrested for originally, because they said that we were drug traffickers and uh, arms dealers. And they arrested us for that. While we were being detained, they ended up telling us later that they discovered two two bodies on the farm. One of the bodies was a friend of ours named Hiru Samarenda. He was a DJ, also worked on the farm, also lived on the farm. Um, on the farm, it's 125 acres, four houses, one nightclub, and uh, what you would call like a, a, a stall for like pigs and chickens and stuff. And Hiru, he lived in one of the houses with his with his wife at that time. Um, I think what uh, what year was it Hiru left? Uh, 2015. 2015, he left the farm because uh, his his community is about 45 minutes into the jungle, 45 minutes away from where we're located. So his his father told him like you know we do we do tourism too. These Americans are not the only one that do ecotourism come back to the farm and, and help us plant trees and, and and help us establish everything. And he rolled out. But we were every, every now and then we would see him because he's living up into the, the Amazon jungle. He wouldn't really come out into the city that much. But every now and then we would see him whenever carnival would come around and I come down here in like February, February time and I would go back when it starts to get warm. 
because the, the the coldness in DC is ridiculous. So I come down here when it's hot, and then go back once it's uh once it's it's nice and warm down there. So during like carnival time in February, we'll see him around, give him high five, talk to him for a little bit. Uh, his brother, we will see his brother around, talk to him. Um, you know, see a lot of the family. No issues, no no problems or anything. And then 2017, they tell us that we're to blame and the cause for his death. Okay, um, so, man, that's a lot for, you know, everybody to digest. So, really, y'all was moving down there and y'all established a business? Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Um, if, uh, if your brother could speak, uh, what, what were you doing before you came to um, Ecuador? Uh, prior to moving to Ecuador, I was in university at the Washington and Jefferson College in Western Pennsylvania. I was studying business and sociology and once i graduated literally two weeks after my graduation from university i was on a plane moving down to ecuador right right so it sounds like before y'all even went down there y'all had something good going for y'all selves y'all ain't just flew down there just to be on some you know some other stuff so you know, no definitely not definitely not you know what i'm saying y'all had y'all stuff together y'all was starting the business doing something positive um so now, to my understanding, was it, it was some sort of issue with the native people? Um, prior to this time period, prior to being arrested, we had no conflicts with the native. We always heard throughout the community from the what they would say, the mestizos, that, you know, be careful with the natives. Don't let them work for you. Their problems. But, you know, being a black man coming from America, you, no one receives it well hearing that a whole race is bad. So we, we judged everybody by their character and their actions. It wasn't until the, this event occurred that we actually had an issue. And from then it just went downhill, but only with this Samarenda family. The Shuar community as a whole is a beautiful community. They're very respectable people. But as we learned after this had passed, that the Samarenda family is, is evil, is evil. 